Hi children, this is your IC teacher. I hope you are staying safe at home, enjoying the day. Today, uh, I wanted to teach you a little more about the algorithm and the flowchart and the pseudocode. So let me start with uh, uh, just giving you a small, uh, small introduction of what is algorithm it says over here an algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure to solve a given problem now when when you are given a problem how do you solve them in a step-by-step -step method is known as algorithm so now if you know what is the algorithm now it says here procedure the procedures what does a procedure mean? A, a procedure is some kind of a se It says a procedure is an infinite sequence of, of well-defined instructions, each which can be carried out in an infinite uh, amount of time. So it's like a procedure you are now for you also. It's a procedure of your life. You're studying infinitely. You're studying to get yourself back on the track and to be a well well citizen you are trying to study well so your studying is something like a procedure it has different instructions you find you have to do this you have to do that so instructions are as follows so procedure is that and then what is a flow chart now algorithm can be represented in two ways one is known as flowchart. A flowchart is known as, it's said here, a flowchart is a type of diagram that represents the algorithm or the process. It shows how the, the flow of data flows from one direction to another direction using symbols. All right. The next is the pseudocode. A pseudocode is actually, it says here, a pseudocode is a compact, informal, high-level description of program. Now, if you, if I just turn to the, the government book, the government book also says some kind of thing, what is pseudocode is. When an algorithm is represented in a simple English term, it is called a pseudocode. Simple English. You don't need to have big grammar in it. Very simple English, you can write them. Pseudocodes are dependent of computer language. Independent of computer language. Pseudocodes can be converted to any program language instructions. Now, hence, pseudocodes can make... Now, it's, it's, it's something like this. If you are going to do something, if you are organized, if you organize your work and then carry out your work, it is good to you. So same as if you were, the ultimate goal of a pseudocode is to create a high level uh, computer language. So to make a high level computer language, you have to simply make a simple terms of English. What you should do? What are the instructions? What are the things that you got to make this program work? Very simple. It's not uh, uh, very complicated. And mind my children, your English and my English might be different. The way you express is different. The way I express is different. But you should always remember, you are to use these kinds of terms, these kinds of keywords that for you to get your pseudocode keep running so to build a, a better understanding pseudocode use the keywords like begin end and so forth so uh, let us um, continue with uh, uh, the, the lesson of pseudocode now if I come here I have something written here writing an algorithm we can write using these kinds of two ways either the flowchart 
or using pseudocode, simple English. So if you look at the simple English over here, here it says, it's like, looking at this, you are trying to cross a road. Trying to cross a road, what you do is, begin, look, left, it's the, the, the keyword is, it's processing, like the pseudocode should have these kinds of uh, information because it's a processing box. So make sure that you write once you write this, mention that this is a processing box. So process in inverted commas or in brackets, you write process. Next, see, now do you see that? I start all my keywords with capitals. Uh, that's a rule that you got to remember. Remember all your keywords begins with capital. So make sure that it is highlighted so that these are keywords. So if, see if cars coming from left and just see here over here, see car, see cars coming. So I just made in my own English, see if cars coming, you can use if, see if cars are coming from the left, yes. You can use that also if you want. You can add R here. See if cars are coming from the from left. Then go to the second steps. You still see that the cars are coming. So still look left. So the second go to, it's another keyword, go to first second. So second step, second step. Else, look right. Else, if it's no, no cars are coming, look right. So, look right. Else, the keyword starts. If, again, you have another decision over here. It says, see, if cars are coming from the right, then go to the second step. Back again to the second step. You have to look whether there is car coming from the left also. If there is no car coming from the right, just see whether the cars are coming from the right. And then what you can do is, then you can cross the road. Once you cross the road, since you have made a decision, a decision box, you can use, you can use he, over here as a decision box. And then since it's the decision, you can say end if and use your constructor to big end your pseudocode using end. I hope you understood this. Now, you feel free to um, ask any questions uh, next time when I have the live session. When you're constructing, when, when, a, when you're constructing a flowchart, make sure these objects are given a specific name to it. So I have mentioned this as inputs and outputs. You can shorten it like I slash O. So to make it clear that it is inputs and output. And then when it comes to a box, make sure that it's a process. And if you have a diamond shape one, so it's a decision. And the connectors that connects the the, the break or the lines of the flows, you can use a connector if you want. And then these are the connect, connecting flow or where the data flows. So the data can um, go in a, um, a sequence manner or in an iteration manner or a selection manner. So the data flow should be highlighted with arrows. Make sure that you use arrows. The next slide, the next slide is all about the rules of flowcharts. Make remember the flowchart generally is drawn from top to bottom. That you should remember. So begin and end. All symbols must be connected with arrows. That's you should remember. All data flowcharts starts with a process symbol. Remember all your data of a flowchart should start with the process 
symbol decisions symbols like decisions where you get this diamond shape must have two in exit point either it should be false or true yes or no you must have that right children this is the exercise that i showed you lastly so look over here so the pseudocodes is simply not not really grammatical english but anyone can really understand begin so always remember the box what you find over here the symbol is a is a process so you remember to make uh, use a bracket and tell that it's a process and then a decision and so forth it's a process and a decision box all right and over here also you will find cross the road is another process so all together one two three four five one two three four five is already there all right so begin to the end you have a simple english term representing the flowchart as solo code i hope you understood this now for most of you if you find uh, a chart represented this way uh, a very simple sequence there is no decisions starts from the top and goes down to this end so if you find in a process box in a process box a equals 0 okay you can always use the keywords like set oh, and then you write this using the keyword set and then you can write your own English set a value to 1 and the end you write it's a process see it's very very clear to it's clear very clear to me Maybe you might write in a different way. You might write set A equals to 1 or equals to 0. That's, it's okay. Equals to 0. That's fine to me. You can write it in any of the English way that you really like. But make sure you use the keyword set. Next, make sure that it is a process box. Next, when you are writing uh, the pseudocode, if you find A equals to B, you can use the keyword initialize. So I'm writing here initialize A value to B. Very simple. Initial A value to B. A equals B. The value of A is equal to B. So it's a process box. Next, if you find something in an incrementing stage, A equals A plus 1. You can use something like this, add or increment. You can, I really like to use increment. So set the value. Okay, set, set a value and increment by one. You can write it in any way you like. You can, maybe you can write like this way. A equals set a equals to a plus 1 fine by me the person who is looking at, uh, at your paper should realize that yes this person who is writing this pseudocode is clearly understood so but it's nice if you can use increment incrementing it its value by 1 that's a very nice statement and make sure that it's a process box I hope you understood this also. We were talking about the process. Now we come to the condition where if then else. These are the conditions. So you know that a condition should have either true or false and and its statements whatever. So over here I have said count 
if the number, the count, the value, whether look whether the count value is lesser than 10. If it's yes, 10, you add another value to A or else you add B another value. So over here, I have said if count is lesser than 10, then since it's a decision, I set the value set I set the value a to 10 and it becomes a process else set B value to 20 and it's a process so, I'm sorry my English is wrong so it's O process process end the statement because it's end if and end very simple. Understood? Good. This statement is go to. You can use this as a loop if you want. But there is a keyword called go to in your book. If you see in your exercise book, pseudo codes, you will find you will find the the pseudo code for go to. You can use uh, some of these keywords as go to two. Over here, you find go to, go to. So some reserve words, keywords. Okay, in your textbook, you find reserve words as go to. You can use loop until so forth. So go to statement is almost like a loop. So here. I have said print hello world 10 times so algorithm in simple English initialize the, the keyword that I taught you initialize the count equals to zero remember it's a process print there you are print hello world it's either input or output you must remember whether this is an input or an output I hope it's output yes okay print increment by the count by one so it's a process here you are is the count you can use either is or if so is the count lesser than 10 it's a decision if yes if it's yes go to the step two step number the two over here step number two one two without starting without the start step number two else stop okay I hope you clearly understood so next one is the while loop the while loop has you must remember while is always the statement becomes true to get an answer so set the value 1 to a set the set value 1, one to a so I'm just adding 1 to a so while is less than 10 what is less than 10 a is less than 10 so it's a decision box increment a by 1 so you are incrementing a by 1 over here if it's true so while is always true else display the value of a you can use i or u or whether it's an input or an output so in this in this it's a output n while remember n while use your n while as the keyword and end very simple so most of you might know now how many times will it loop. So if you have any doubts, please free to ask me when the live session is going on. The next loop is the for loop. I hope you can remember that. So uh, it's also the loop over here. In has a value of one. In loop while the n is 
lesser or equal to 100 so it will increment till 100 and then if it's true display the end and increment its value from 1 and then once it's reached its decision false once the, the false statement when this becomes true the false and then it stops so here begin set value 1 to n so 1 to n for n value is from 1 to 100 I hope you can remember 1 to 100 loop can you remember do while n is less or equal to 100 then the decision is this is the decision remember decision is just mentioning that this is the decision box you must remember you use this as from use the brackets to represents that this is a decision box display n so it's output increment its value by one process else n for remember it's n for not n while n for n displaying numbers from 1 to 10 if you have any questions Fail to ask me next and then next uh, we come to repeat so very interesting um, topic to repeat it repeats so the statement becomes false only it goes on so remember while is true repeat is false so the, the statement repeats so over here 100 I have given a value of 100 to A at the beginning, initialized. And then I have asked a question, is A equal to 10? So, no, false. Then what I do is I minus the value of A previously by 10 and then displays. And then it keeps on looping until the statement is true until the test statement is true and then displays yes so and then the end the loop ends so let us see how the the pseudocode is represented set the value to 100 so set value 100 to a repeat remember that repeat increment it's not increment it's the decrement you decrease the value of a by 10 and it's a process and then display no each time when the when it loops no else at the final when it becomes equal only it will display yes and this is another um, I input and an output so remember to write that also as input and output and then until until a is equal to 10 loop until a the value of a becomes 10 equals to 10 and it's a decision and end and you must remember you should use uh, so I forgot to write uh, the end repeat so you can write it the repeat ends and the complete program end so remember uh, you try to write in your own English try to write don't write big sentences just short sentences that the the person who looks at your paper will understand so looking at all these concepts of pseudocodes now I'm going to give you a an ex exercise example one finding sum of 10 numbers 
so you have to re uh, decide whether you are going to use so since, since this is a loop what kind of a loop are you going to decide is it a for loop a while loop or a, a repeat loop so decide that write this down and tell me write and give me the answer when I come for the live sessions thank you you have a wonderful day and if you have any doubts please I always tell you send me a text message I'll help you thank you